Welcome back, dear viewers. Um, Dr. Fahad, I really like the part where you said that exercise can be medicine and therapy, which I think which is true about exercise. Now, um, in this video, we saw a few assessments you do to the patients. Can you just quickly go through the assessments that you do? Sure. Uh, so uh, uh, I, can, I can go back in, in stages and, and uh, I can use some of the pictures that I provide if you don't sure, mind. Sure, okay? for the services. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, first of all, you should, you should have noticed probably that I look different in that, <laughs> in that <laughs> video. Did. So uh, uh, yeah, I apologize because I wasn't prepared <laughs> for this. So anyways, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the program starts really, uh, it's a holistic view of l looking at the patients. So we yeah. really want to know everything that is related to the patient's fitness level. And I mean almost everything. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the patient comes to us expresses their um, their interest to join the program uh, we arrange for them to have uh, a set of blood work uh, urine tests and a cardiogram which is the ecg to look at the, the heart uh, function as well mm -hmm. uh, after doing this uh, the, the patient will be interviewed by a physician either myself or a colleague of mine uh, will will take a, a detailed medical history do a physical examination and review the results of these tests and review the result of the cardiogram with them and then prepare them and describe to them what's going to happen later on, which is the fitness assessment. Fitness assessment uh, requires that we arrange for an appointment for the patient. It takes around two hours and it starts with, with the picture that I'm going to view right now. Uh, that is uh, uh, the patient's being interviewed and is filling the uh, questionnaire. I guess the, um, the can you show us the picture? And uh, uh, so the questionnaire will have uh, different aspects from the patient's first physical activity mm -hmm. and most importantly their quality of life because quality of life it's really a very important issue that we focus on Absolutely. during uh, during our uh, assessment of the patient the machine that's sitting beside the patient or the sorry the laptop that's sitting beside the machine is connected to a machine that we're going to show right now in the next picture mm -hmm. uh, this is the body composition uh, analyzer so our body composition analyzer is not only going to tell us again about the quantity but also going to tell us about the quality and that's very important when we look at what the fit, uh, what, what the fat percentage is, yeah. and uh, how much is the muscle, and how much is the fat. It's and amazing it, and how this machine body. works. Like, how does it tell like you're how much fat and how much? No muscle? idea. <laughs> that's the short answer. So I'm, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Uh, it really depends on uh, some assessments of the uh, of the body liquids. Yeah. So it's very important for us to instruct the patients that they shouldn't shouldn't be drinking water for the last. Uh, I think four hours before doing the test and even if they feel thirsty just hold it until they do this test and then they can have water because exactly. that's very important this this test is very sensitive mm -hmm. to to the body liquids so it, it tells us from that point uh, that uh, uh, what the percentage of fat and muscle the body has mm -hmm. and it gives us also a report and that report is very important to be compared later on after our uh, our program uh, then uh, the uh, patient will go into a series of tests that uh, assesses their, uh, uh, assess their uh, fitness and one of them is the, what we call flexibility testing. Yeah. So they do uh, different uh, uh, push-ups and pull-ups and uh, uh, with our uh, fitness instructors to see how many times or how many repetitions they can do uh, during doing this test and uh, then they start having uh, uh, the, the test that we call probably the gold standard of fitness. This is the most important test for fitness that starts with uh, checking their lung function. So we do what we call spirometry, it's the lung function test uh, that assesses uh, the capacity of the lung to blow air during resting conditions. Uh, this will progress into what we have seen in the, uh, in the short video, uh, which is the cardiopulmonary exercise test. Uh, this is a comprehensive uh, fitness testing that tells us about uh, the functions of the lungs during exercise, functions of the heart during exercise, and also the functions of the muscles yeah. and the level of fitness uh, uh, during exercise. Uh, so the, this is our 
uh, fitness assessment, the patient will be then sent to the uh, exercise specialist or the fitness instructor uh, with the result of his or her test. Uh, uh, and the exercise specialist will sit with the patient and counsel them about exercise and sort of like negotiate with them and get a sense from them what their preferences are in order to start the exercise program uh, utilizing the facilities that we have. So as yeah. you can see from the picture, mm -hmm. uh, if you want me to proceed, you can see from the picture that we have a set of aerobic and at the back of the picture there, there are also uh, resistance e uh, equipments or machines that we can use. Uh, we also uh, make the patients, uh, uh, it's very important that uh, it's a one-to-one -one individualized exercise program. So there is complete surveillance over the patients and uh, they're very su supervised uh, because in the event that complications happen and this would probably make uh, uh, the fitness and uh, rehab center and probably this man in general uh, uh, unique is that the special service that we have. So this is very important for us uh, uh, that we monitor the patients closely about their exercise. That's perfect. And, and in case that they, they develop possible so, complications, yeah. we're right away mm -hmm. for them. There are nurses and physicians around. They can, they can take care of them. The best part is it's custom made for each patient and it just t it takes uh, into consideration all the lifestyle that or the, even their ability like for example uh, do you think if a patient has joint pain for example you take this into consideration as well I'm sure and uh, the best part is if any complication happens you have uh, someone there ready to deal with it is it that's that's very true and I think uh, uh, we don't stop at that level as well uh, uh, one of the important things that we we noticed that that actually encourages patients to to uh, to come and join and probably be more sort of adherent and and uh, uh, make sure that they attend to the exercise is that they are part of the prescription they design the prescription along with uh, with their supervisors or or with their fitness instructors so they sit with the uh, uh, with the exercise prescriptionist mm -hmm. and tell them about their preferences so that's very important patients do stuff that they like that's very important for them exactly. and also very important for us because it gives us some sort of like a positive feedback mm -hmm. so the patients will love it what they're doing they enjoy it more and they want to do it again so just going back to the uh, uh, to the joint problems patients with diabetes are uh, it's very common that they develop either a joint problem or balance problem mm -hmm. and in both of these situations very important that we work on exercises that that do not depend on uh, having your joints or, or do not depend on the joint or the balance so one of the things that we can and you can go back to the to the picture this is one of our uh, uh, preferred patients in the uh, in the center and probably mm -hmm. one of the uh, uh, all patients that join, uh, that we do also group exercises for them. So wow. patients enjoy really uh, doing a uh, group exercise and it's very important that they actually listen to each other and they exchange experiences. It's like a community basically. It's yeah. kind and of a group, yeah. Yeah, a group therapy or a group yeah. exercise and, and if the patient doesn't belong to the treatment uh, to the treatment cycle they they feel left out they feel that they're yeah. forced to do stuff and that's definitely something that we wouldn't prefer exactly. we also have a walking track in this man wow. <laughs> on the fifth floor that uh, uh, extends for 100 meters and people can wow, enjoy really jumping nice. and and running uh, beside the group exercises and most importantly as i wanted to to mention is the group exercises in the water so we have a, a therapy pool that people can enjoy especially people with joint problems because part uh, uh, as i said part of the part of the treatment is that you exert yourself so if you have a, an, an abnormal joint or if you have an abnormal gait or balance it's very important that you practice in a safe environment mm -hmm. and the group exercises in the pool that is very supervised uh, is uh, a way to go i think from yeah, that yeah absolutely agree and it's a really lovely gym it's it's really nice like in comparison to a lot of places in kuwait this is this is really really you know high standards it's amazing I, yeah i think people can invest a lot in the um and the way the gym looks like uh, 
from the from the sort of like exterior of it yeah. but what what actually uh, we've been focusing on along with that is the the, the level of the service and the safety Absolutely. of the patient and exactly. the cleanliness of the uh, of the place uh, and i think hygiene has been always uh, something uh, extremely important for us because uh, pe patients with diabetes uh, one they may get uh, infections in their uh, feet which is very important for us to watch for and we work along with the department of clinical services to look after their feet especially if they exert themselves and during exercise and two which is also important that patients or uh, patients with diabetes are subjected to get infections because their immunity is not at their best yeah, uh, yeah. they may have lazy uh, uh, blood cells that fight infections so they may they may not have uh, the best immunity so they're subjective to infections mm. especially if they're in contact with people who have infections uh, so it's, yeah. it's better for us to to protect them against this mm -hmm. and in order to to provide this and in, in, uh, uh, in a secure place i think the best way to do it is that we uh, pay a lot of attention to these aspects. That's amazing, um, which is, I think, a very important aspect is hy hygiene, and as yeah. you said. Absolutely right. Yeah. Um, now, do patients have good results in your gym? Like, what do you think? Uh, well, um, you know, I'm proud to say yes, definitely yes. And, and, and one of the priorities in this month is uh, that we've been taking, uh, taking over as a, uh, as a responsibility is that we we don't only want to provide the service as much as that we want to prov to prove to the public and to authorities that we actually are capable of making change and providing good effects uh, for those patients and i think one of the uh, one of the unique things that the sman diabetes institute uh, is famous for is is our center not just because I work in there, but I think <laughs> our, our results uh, it's speak amazing, uh, yeah. for, for, for themselves. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's been approved by, uh, by international organizations, uh, by international universities. Uh, the ones that we actually have shared experience with, they've been Im impressed with the level that we provide. And we're very proud as a team and as an institute to, be, uh, to have such a reputation and moving forward for it. So if, you, uh, if you'd like to go more specific, I've actually have yeah. presented some, or prepared some slides. Happy yeah, to that would be wonderful, them. yeah. And uh, uh, those actually uh, are, had, uh, the, these slides were not published yet. So uh, something that is in, uh, in press. And uh, I'm just gonna spend some time describing what's in the first slide, uh, but in general, uh, the slide talks about uh, the effect of the lifestyle program uh, on different uh, outcomes. So what I mean by different outcomes is, I'm just waiting for the arrow to, to show up. Okay, so we've got the arrow in here, and uh, this is the neutral line, if you will. Uh, I'm sure the, it's, it's, um, it's uh, yeah, I hope it's, yeah, it's uh, obvious clear. On, the, yeah. on the monitor, but anyways, uh, so this is the neutral, uh, whatever goes up means that we're in the positive, it doesn't yeah. mean that it's, a, it's, a, it's the right thing, but uh, <laughs> the positive means that there is an increase, and whatever goes below the neutral mm -hmm. line means that there is a decrease. So yeah. when we talk about the effect of the lifestyle program on blood pressure, uh, what we would like to see in a blood pressure is... Uh, more into the decrease. So most okay. of these patients have actually had, these are individual patients, by the way, each blue line represents a, a, a patient. And we can see that most of the patients that uh, have gone through the program had a reduction in their blood pressure, That's which is amazing. a positive wow. outcome. Yeah. We're just gonna move forward with different outcomes, which I find very interesting for the public and definitely for us as uh, physicians True. in general yeah. and for the scientists as well. Mm -hmm. So when we get to the heart rate, the lower the heart rate, the more beneficial the wh whatever intervention you have. And it's one of the independent uh, indicators of a protection against uh, death. So for, for the heart rate in our lifestyle program, you can see that most of the patients are into the decrease side of the, uh, of the, of the diagram. So it means that most of the patients have got the benefit 
when it comes to the daily blood sugar and here when it's very relevant to uh, our program in this month. And by the way, those patients are Kuwaiti patients. So we're talking about the Kuwaiti experience. We're not extrapolating from international guidelines or inter from international studies. These are our own patients. This is what happens to them with exercise. Wow. So the, the point is, whatever we're making, whatever we're doing is actually uh, effective. So you can see that there is almost all the patients, it's probably except for one, but almost all the patients had a drop in their blood sugar, which is That's beneficial amazing. in terms of and, and the, um, in patients with diabetes. Uh, pay, uh, some physicians will look at what we call a glycated hemoglobin, or uh, so some people will call it the sneaky, yeah. the sneaky glucose level. Uh, <laughs> when we want to check for glucose on a on, on long-term basis, would like also to have this uh, uh, reduced. And again, in the, same, uh, in the same way the diagram expresses itself, speaks for uh, that there is a consistent reduction in most of the patients in terms of their glycated hemoglobin. Uh, again, cholesterol is very important also for physicians to know about it. Most of our patients, as you can see in here, the most of our patients had a decrease in their cholesterol. And when it comes to weight, things have been a little bit less variable, uh, sorry, uh, um, I mean more variable, uh, but the, there is uh, the majority of patients loses weight uh, between one and two kilograms and on 12 weeks. Uh, people may look at something called the body mass index, the BMI, yeah. especially with the weight reduction surgeries that we have. So again, most of the patients have a low body mass index. Uh, and not only that, if you remember, we talked about the quality and quantity and the fat percentage. And you can see this diagram speaks for itself. Most of the patients, again, had a reduction in their fat percentage, uh, which is quite amazing for scientists uh, to yeah, look at this. Yeah. The, the, there is no single drug that can, can do all of these uh, wow. changes. Now into the positive or the increase uh, findings, and you can see that flexibility, again, flexibility, uh, increases after 12, year, uh, 12 weeks of, of exercise. Amazing. And this is the last slide. This is probably the most important slide because fitness is an indicator or is protective against death. So if you want to talk about something that causes uh, m uh, more improvement and, and more uh, protection from death, uh, uh, fitness improves with the exercise program uh, to a significant level, and we're talking around 20%. This is a huge in a generation. This is a huge in a population uh, uh, with uh, uh, an epidemic of a disease. So I think that uh, um, uh, I can't talk more, but I, I'm trying to convince uh, the no, it's, I it's definitely actually, convince myself. Yeah. I'm trying to convince the public that you no, have something that results. is uh, and they are local, and they're local uh, results as well, and, and works in Kuwait. Definitely. Yeah, 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 that's really amazing and impressive. Um, we actually have a question from our one of your, our viewers, and he's asking about uh, like uh, after exercise, how long do we wait until we have the next meal? Oh, so uh, that um, definitely should be asked for uh, a nutritionist exactly. or probably an a nutritionist that has a specific uh, interest of, uh, in exercise. Uh, exercise digests whatever has been eaten before it. So uh, uh, depend, it depends on what you have eaten before and how the exercise was vigorous or was it light exercise. So I think it really depends on uh, what, in terms of safety, there shouldn't be any restrictions. As far as I know, there are no restrictions on when to resume eating after the exercise. So you can, you can eat right away. But in terms of healthy eating combined with exercise, I think a professional should be Absolutely uh, should be agree. About that. Now, Ramadan is coming up. And um, I think a lot of people will refrain from exercise during that time. But uh, what do you advise the patients? Diabetic patients specifically. Do not refrain from exercise. As simple as that. <laughs> uh, I think um, 
again as much as exercise has beneficial uh, effects uh, for the body it also helps the diabetics to uh, to uh, get protected and improve their uh, sugar level during the fasting time so uh, ramadan has never been an issue for most of the diabetics there are an exception there are an exception especially those with type 1 diabetes who may actually have uh, troubles in terms of controlling their blood sugar or if you will swinging in the level of their blood sugar it goes too high or too low but in general patients with diabetes it should be safe for them to exercise and probably the general guideline is to exercise near the time of breaking the fast uh, However, that being said, I think every diabetic, whenever they consider going to or, or um, adopting an exercise behavior uh, during Ramadan, especially if they uh, plan to exercise during the fasting time, they should consider uh, consulting a healthcare professional. Absolutely. Asking, agree, asking exactly. their physician is probably uh, mm -hmm. the best thing to do. Every, the, every diabetic can exercise after. Uh, after breaking the fast but not everyone can exercise during breaking the fast uh, most of them can exercise and also again uh, uh, we're talking about something that is simple something that is doable you only have to consult with your uh, diabetes That's physician exactly. to, to ask them what exercise that's really good now the thing is um, one of our viewers is asking as well like uh, are there going to be other centers that's going to open in Kuwait, similar to this man. Uh, that's definitely beyond me. Uh, you, you're asking me all these <laughs> you wish, questions. You wish, no, I these do. the viewer's questions. Yes, so my, <laughs> so my, uh, my, my dream is actually to have a disman, yeah. in Hawali and disman, and in Barak al-Kibir disman, and Jahra, and at least a disman in every government. They need, I think I, it's, I, I, I think, think that yeah. this, is, this, this has been my dream. Uh, uh, and I'm, I'm uh, this is what we wish maker. for, I think. That this is what we wish for, a center in every that's section. Correct. However, yeah. that being said, I think that the care of diabetes uh, should be sent back to the, uh, to, to the primary care level centers. Absolutely. Because they, they, they're the ones who can uh, deal with the day-to-day -day, uh, uh, day -day matters that, that deals with exercise. I think uh, something like this man uh, needs to look after the patients for special considerations. And for example, the fitness and rehab center, uh, it's something that can provide a service and we don't really wanna, uh, replicating it might be a little bit tough. If you, if you have a fitness and rehabilitation center in every governorate, I think this would serve the community. It will, it will make a better, Definitely. it will make, you know, improves health in a really right. big way. But, now, but treatment of diabetes in general yeah. uh, uh, should be actually taken care of in the primary center. Absolutely agree. Now, uh, before we finish, we have uh, just uh, one last question, which is actually the packages that you have in Desman. What are the packages yeah. you have? So uh, that's, that's an excellent question. Uh, probably timing is perfect as well. Because uh, we're in this man, we're in the, we're in the uh, probably a stage that we're designing package, other packages uh, for patients at different levels of age and different interest as well during the summertime. Because that's very important mm -hmm. uh, for us. And as we said, uh, yes, we suffer from the summer, uh, free, we suffer from the weather. Uh, and also, yes, that we have to use the technology to, to utilize or to make benefit out of our time. So in the summertime, we have or we've been working on two packages that, that, are, that, are, that are related directly with exercise. One mm -hmm. of them is the concerns our kids, concerns our children. It's very important for us to focus on this generation because uh, we want to build up a concept of healthy uh, life. Uh, living and uh, in general yeah absolutely. and we have a couple of uh, summer camps wow, uh, summer for children, camps for children uh, and for the, for uh, for people and during their uh, uh, as well during their teens as well like up to 15 wow, uh, i believe really good that's uh, people amazing. can just call and ask our extension is 4900 and we can give them all the details that they want but i think that uh, uh, these summer camps are very essential, especially for people with overweight. We, uh, our focus on, on the teens is 
for them to reduce weight. So we're going to introduce a healthy life as well as nutritional advices and some classes as well with our professionals and uh, the fitness and rehab center. The other, uh, the other project or the other proposal uh, uh, is uh, the, uh, the package uh, for the uh, for the adults, for yeah. people with more over, over 18, those who have diabetes and overweight, who 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 want to reduce weight, we can uh, we're planning to provide them with a package that lasts for a week. That they they will have series of lectures and workshops, and we can also tell them how to go to the community and enjoy their life, at, and at the same time get a beneficial effect which is amazing. Um, thank you so much for being here on our show. Like, uh, this is uh, very inspiring and I think this is one of the best centers we have in Kuwait because it's so organized and um, it has a lot of to give to the patients as well. And I hope we have a lot of centers like this in the future. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing the information and, um, and uh, thank you so much. So, Thanks for having um, me. Yeah, we'll see you uh, viewers next week uh, with an another episode. Thank you for watching. Good night.